from Trimble Construction, you're listening to the Connected Construction Show, where we connect you to the contractors, owners, designers, engineers, and construction professionals who are finding better ways to work. And now, here's your host, Matt Sprague. Hello and welcome back to the Connected Construction Show. I am your host, Matt Sprague. Excited to be back in this seat, and for our guest this week, we have Sam Lemon from MJ Church. Sam, welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Thank you very much for having me. So, um, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, we jump, we 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 get right into the show. By the way, there's not a lot of build up. We just kind of get right into it. So, tell us a bit about yourself, like how you got involved in the industry. Uh, and then, you know, what has, what, what path has led you to where you are today? Sure. So I'm a senior engineering surveyor for MJ church. So I primarily look after our machine control systems, uh, building the 3d models, doing initial takeoffs, all that sort of good technology, uh, type workflows. Um, and I've been particularly recently pursuing everything construction technology related. So trying to determine what technologies are going to be uh, advantageous for us in the next five, 10, so over many years, so we can reap efficiency benefits on site. Um, I started my career as uh, a site engineer, so uh, line and line level and quality, um, setting out pins for roads and batter rails and everything sort of pre-machine control days. Um, uh, and I worked for a tier one contractor doing that, but I, I saw the future was within construction technology. So I really wanted to to switch gear and go and pursue that sort of full time in a, in a company that really understood the 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 benefits that that could bring to their company. Um, so that's but that's been me really, and it's been it's been quite an exciting journey for the most part. Quite challenging, I think. It's coming in the time in the short time that I've been in the industry, it's changed leaps and bounds. Um, the the role technology plays within construction now is huge. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Yeah, just within, I don't know, past seven or eight years, maybe at most, you know, it, there are now like dedicated roles to it, right? And as opposed to somebody who was, you know, maybe they they were uh, VDC and they were expanded that role into doing, you know, a hundred other things in terms of exploring new technologies and seeing how how that can be better leveraged for all the different projects that you're working on. Now it's like you actually have people in even in, in, in larger cases, entire departments mm -hmm. that are dedicated to those types of things. Absolutely. And that, that's a hundred percent where we're heading as a business. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to transition some of my responsibilities away from some, some of the day to day operational running more towards that future look ahead and getting the best out of the technology that we currently own. And are investing in so you know we've 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 made that initial investment in primarily all trimble machine control equipment and, and software um but from our perspective it's not just about throwing money at the problem it's also about getting that technology and figuring out how to get the best from those systems and train the operators and build the models in a, such a way that the machines can access them efficiently and that people understand how to use them to standardize it and I think it's then when you when you dedicate people to that function that you really, really read the benefits of the technology. Because the technology as a standalone item isn't particularly effective. It's it's utilizing it effectively. So yeah, I hundred percent agree. Having somebody in that sort of role within a business is is where you reap those benefits. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um coming from the technology vendor side of it, um, it is I wouldn't say it's a misunderstanding. Maybe, maybe it's a, a, a misconception that um, our products are 100% baked and ready to go. Um, the technology is so new and advancing so quickly that, and I think you just alluded to it, right? That is that, that it has some innate capabilities, but how it actually gets utilized and implemented in the field are, it's still yet to be determined to, to, to know exactly the best, most, most efficient ways uh, of utilizing. So it's important that we have organizations like yourself that are testing it out, utilizing it, and then providing that type of feedback back. 
to say, man, it, it we could kind of like duct tape it together to do this, but if it had this a neat type of integration with, you know, whatever piece of hardware or other piece of software, or if it had this a, additional functionality that it can, you know, the, 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 the efficiencies can be exponential. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And, uh, and, you know, juice the Trimble, they've been really, we, we really like working with Trimble, um, simply because it's a, it's very much a two way stream. Um, so we work quite closely with beta testing various hardware and software components on machine and off machine. And, and we, we do a lot of that. There's a lot of feedback. This doesn't work. Can we improve this? Can we add this feature to Trimble Earthworks, etc.? Um, and we've been doing that over the last sort of three, four years now with Trimble. And it, it's, I think for both sides, it's really reaped some benefits. Um, That's awesome. So no. as the, as the platform materials. I think one, one thing that we, uh, we skipped over is, um, where are you located? Um, yeah. And, um, and then, uh, once we get that we get kind of established, let's also just talk about, um, you know, what, what you've been working on lately. I think a lot of it has been around a lot of buzz is about like office to field, field to office, design to field work, that type of thing. So I'd love to kind of hear you know, what, what you've been working on, what you're helping your team straight line. Sure. So, uh, MJ church, we're a, we're a fairly large, uh, earthworks contractor based in the Southwest of the United Kingdom. Um, and we operate a fairly large fleet of machine control systems, relatively new machines these days. Uh, so a mixed fleet of dozers, large excavators, dump trucks, ADTs, etc. Um, we are, we are primarily an earthworks contractor, although we're starting to take on larger schemes these days, um, as, as we grow as a business and as you know, the, to be honest, the technology is continuing to win us work that perhaps wouldn't have been offered to us or open to us. So it's, it's interesting to see technology, our, our capability as a technological equipped contractor paying dividends in these, uh, tenders and, and bid submissions. Um, but some of the schemes we've been working on recently, uh, we've got a large uh, earthworks cut and fill operation in South Wales. Uh, we've got a fairly intricate, uh, interesting road scheme in Cornwall, nice part of the world in south southwest of England. Um, we work a lot with national highways uh, on refurbishment type schemes, bridge deck refurbishment, uh, parapets, etc. Um, and a lot of quarry work. Uh, land reuse um lots of interesting earthwork schemes some complex earthwork schemes some simpler than others um, but all 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 interesting schemes where we can get really good utilization from machine control and and i think that's why we've really tried to hone this office to field workflow so the machine control so it's it's all right i'll back up for a second uh, UK, Europe in general is, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the United States is, uh, ahead of the United States in terms of the, being able to leverage technology for these types of things. And I know a lot of the efforts that we're doing specifically around our, uh, with our, uh, the United States Department of Transportation and the, the state run Department of Transportation is trying to get them to um, leverage this technology uh, better in terms of, um, you know, one, creating a constructible model um, and, and being able to leverage machine control uh, for, you know, greater efficiencies, increased safety, uh, better sustainability uh, in, in the projects that they're running. Um, Am I speaking to the choir here? Is that kind of like where 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 you're at in terms of the use of machine control, um, or even better yet, maybe we back up. Maybe I'm speaking another language to some of our listeners. What does machine control mean, and then how what is it? How is it leveraged uh, in your organization and the benefits that it provides? Okay, so um, we should probably start where I started my career, which was machine control was around back then, although it was by far and they not wild, you know, widespread adopted. Um, 
I so I used to be a site engineer. We we go and set out timber profiles, batter rails that would represent the geometry invariably of a road or a pond or a batter or whatever. Um, and then we work with machine operators to cut that profile or to fill that profile. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of timber getting destroyed. Come back in on the Monday, it will be knocked down. Seemingly no one knew where or what had happened to it or whatever, and you, you go recess it all again. Um, so the advent of machine control has removed a lot of that, and it's removed a lot of that people and plant interaction, which is obviously a huge advantage in terms of potential incidents around, you know. Um, so machine control for us is a, is, is a tool like any other that ena enables us to do more work more efficiently with fewer people at the cutting phase. So we build simple, complex earthworks models for our machine control systems that completely removes the need for uh, site engineers to go out and set out profile boards, batter rails, etc. And it allows the operator to take more ownership over the site as a whole, over their geometry. And that's that's an interesting piece that we found that is not necessarily obvious to begin with. Giving the operators who previously had no, unless they downloaded the PDF or were given a PDF of the job, they had no way of visualizing the site. But now they've got a screen in their cab that's fully 3D that they can spin around and they can understand they can understand where we're heading and that then they do take a bit of ownership over those sections of the scheme that they're working on, which has been in quite an interesting thing to witness really. Um, but basically it's putting, it's putting line and level control into their hands, into the screen and the machine guides them to that point, whether it be through GNNS, um, corrections or through robotic total station corrections. Um, but fundamentally, it's it's about for us. It's about efficiency. It's about eliminating that people and plant interaction as much as possible, and it's about quality for our client as well, because we can deliver a higher quality product in less time with the machine control systems in place. So, one of the challenges that 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 I've experienced is having a high quality model which to run the machine control on. So what makes a high quality model in, yeah. So let's stop there. What makes a high quality? Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting that it's interesting that this, um, podcast has come when it has actually, I've literally just come out of a meeting with probably about 40 of some of the most high level people in the UK regarding design of design firms, national highways, uh, contractors. Um, so we're in we're in a bit of a workshop called Design for Machines. So the UK is trying to standardise our approach for Design for Machines because at the minute what we've got is a load of designers building designs that they're not really sure what the the end use will be it, in products that are capable of producing nice geometry sometimes, like Bentley open roads and. I hesitate to say civil 3D, but I'm told it is capable of nice things eventually. Um, building these models for for reasons they're not too sure about. So we're we're looking at how to simplify and standardize the approach from designers in the office to the to the machines on site with with a mindset that autonomy is coming at some point, and whether it's uh, part autonomy, semi autonomy, or full autonomy, we want to develop a workflow that works for that. Um, but a, what, a lot of what I've been doing recently is trying to standardize our approach with people in the seat still. So a, the typical workflow for us is we receive a design from a design firm. Um, and then that invariably that is sometimes, sometimes really good, very rarely, sometimes really good, but often a, uh, like my own, the, the particular job we're working on in Wales is about 18 kilometers. And that job is broken into about 85 models that govern the geometry of that road scheme. And you can't ask an operator to switch between 85 different models. You just can't because that's a recipe for disaster. So what I try and do is take 
take the job, split it into sections, and then I build a hybrid model for the machines that is correct, that I've I've interrogated in your business center, that I've remodeled, retargeted batters where I need to, added lines, removed lines. Uh, and my, my whole premise is simple, simplicity, that the fewest number of design members that are required to build the geometry that we're looking for. That, that's always where I try and approach this from. Um, so we've been on a bit of a mission to, to simplify and standardize. And, and so that every time an operator gets into one of our machines, they're seeing the same sort of design names, they're seeing the same sort of colors, um, the same sort of text layout, line styles, etc. so that it, it's accessible for them. And then there's a bit of a hidden motive behind it in that by doing that, we are moving forward towards something that is standardized across the machine control systems. And then when all, all semi-autonomy or full autonomy starts to become more widespread, that transition is easier. Because the last thing we need is, you know, hundreds of different file format standards, et cetera. Um, we, we can see that this is going to be the future, but certainly in the short term and probably medium term, they'll still very much require humans in the seats, possibly off machine in a seat, but controlling the machine. Um, but that, that's what it's about for us. A, a big part of my role is taking a design created by a, a, a large design firm, interrogating it and fixing it and simplifying it and making it accessible to the field. I, I think it's important to, to know it. Um, some of our operators struggle with reading and writing still. I think that is probably not very well talked about within the industry, but it is a thing. So part of what we do is to try and, instead of you know communicating this through lots of words and paragraphs and PDFs and drawings, well, simple colors, uh, simple text, things that make it accessible for people to use. And if, if the if the design on the machine is accessible and simple, it's, it's usable for them. And if it's usable for them, they, they will deliver your efficiency gains. If, if they can get into the machine, they know where they are, and they can just dig or fill or whatever, using that model that I think that's where we are starting to see more of the efficiency benefits. So, uh, I'm going to rewind this a little bit in terms sure. of, excuse me, the, uh, the, you mentioned the group that you just came out of, uh, uh, of a meeting talking about, you know, design standards and right, trying to figure out how, uh, you know, your end product, the sim simplistic version is what ends up getting utilized. Is there a scenario? So I would imagine that, you know, you receive the set of drawings, 85 different drawings from, from, from a, a large design firm. Is there a scenario where you're involved earlier on? Because I would imagine that you receive it and then you having to make the modification is, mm. is a bit of a time suck. Uh, uh, so is there a, is there a scenario fast forwarding? 100%. I, I I would I shoot myself in the foot really because I I shouldn't I shouldn't need to exist right yeah I shouldn't need to exist why why am I taking why am I taking a design that was developed in open roads or civil 3d spending two or three days of my life to then get it into a format that will work on the machine from an outsider's perspective that looks like madness but the reality is if you took those models that we're provided did a, a simple create surface and push to machine, it would be a disaster yeah. because, and there's lots of factors that contribute to it. And I'm not saying all design firms produce bad models because they certainly don't. Some are fantastic, but, but generally speaking, there isn't the, the priority or emphasis on making them compatible for machine control simply because well, lots of reasons they might not have the resource to do it. It might not be a priority for them they might not have been asked to etc as far as they're concerned they've delivered the design yeah. that they've been asked to produce so yes <laughs> i think what i'm trying to do more with them at the minute is to work work with designers earlier on in that process and, and i've got some great examples of that particularly on a truro job where we've been working with the designer um 
really well to say, you know, I don't, I don't need face of curb. I just, just remove it. It's, it's pointless to me. I don't need back of edging curb. It's pointless. I need edge of road, top of bank, bottom of bank, etc. Simple. <laughs> and so they can, they can tailor their corridor templates to only give me the lines that we need. So, but that's just on a macro scale with me working with a designer and true. What, what we're looking to do as a country is, is to move that process higher up the chain and standardize it so that we know if it's an earthworks model for machine control, we only need X, Y, and Z. Um, we don't need ABC, et cetera. That, that's what it's about, I think. But yeah, I, I, in a way, it'd be nice if I didn't have to exist in that particular modeling role. I quite enjoy the modeling role, but I think the reality is I'll always need to exist in some some gatekeeper sense to make sure that the data go into our field. Yeah. Well, it's like, audible. it'll still exist. It'll just be, in terms of the timeline of the project, be shifted over because yeah. either you'll work for the design firm because of the extensive yeah. knowledge of how to be able to or there'll be a partnership between the organizations yeah. to make sure that it's just a, a bit, be able to deliver these things a lot faster. So, anyway. and I think I think that is coming. We're we're, we're starting a little trial soon with Trimble Quadri uh, to sort of take work clo more closely with the design firms to take those models straight out of their design packages into Quadri, examine, interrogate them within there, and then pull the data that we need out into either straight to the machine or into Trimble Business Center, a bit of extra post-processing or, you know, tarting up with text and colors and such, and then onto the machine. Um, so I think that is, that is coming and we're, we're trying to do that in, in a small scale and see how that process works. But yeah, I don't, it would be nice if I didn't have to spend two days of my life breaking and joining lines, but hopefully we can get to that point soon. And those two days could be spent, have to spend training operators or if setting up sites with, you know, decent control networks or, yeah. uh, you know, so, understanding. So my light of questioning has been um, uh, uh, unintentionally negative, right? In terms of like, what's wrong? What's wrong? There's a lot. Yeah, no, there's a lot. There is a lot that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also a lot of lot that's good in terms of uh, the the advances that have happened. So, Connor, do you have any like um, you know recent projects or stories that you can share in terms of how? how the use of the, you know, the latest generation of machine control has been, has been a positive or has kind of like pushed the boundaries of what has historically been expected. Yeah, hundred percent. So uh, like a big part of this modeling, uh, a big part of this simplifying the modeling approach is I've, I've developed this sort of, uh, color polygon based approach to the models. So, uh, GCS 900 was the older. Uh, machine the Trimble machine control system uh, that supported lines and colors and some text. It, it works really well. It still works really well. Um, Trimble Earthworks and its enhanced processing powers allowed us to build, I, I hasten to say, more complicated models, but models with more graphics in a way. So models, so what I can do now is when I do the takeoff process in Trimble Business Center, where I quantify topsoil replacement roads, etc., I can assign a color to those roads, and then I can have that color be present on the machine control system for the operator. And it sounds so simple, and I've had lots of comments from people going, "Oh, just colors? What's that about?" But put yourself in the in the shoes of somebody on site who might struggle with literacy. You suddenly know that a green area is a an area to be topsoiled an area that you probably don't want to put capping or subbase into stone. Previous to that, it was just a blue line on a screen. So they, they don't, unless they're reading that line or they're looking at the layer that that line resides on, which very people, people do. What we were finding was stone gets pushed two or three meters beyond where it needs to sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then either that stone just gets wasted, forgotten about, tops all over, or it has to be trimmed back etc yep. so if you if you amplify that across multiply that across 18 kilometers worth of carriageway or whatever it is there's some huge efficiency gains there by something that is actually relatively simple to implement mm -hmm. so so a big part of what i've been working on recently is trying to find the low-hanging fruits 
trying to find the simple bits in the you know little tweaks here and there that make things easier and more efficient on site so that that's where it's been working well and the other the other place where that has been working really well for us is is quality because uh, this particular job in Truro it's it's a relatively small scheme but it's it's complicated geometry in that you've got a you've got a road you've got a, a footway a road a cycleway another footway and batters either side each one of those has a different depth assigned to it now previously the operator would just try and loosely look at the cross section and the line work and try and understand where the steps were um, but now with the color banding they can immediately go okay I, my machines move from the verge to the footway and that's why the dtm levels are dropped so they can understand that okay the levels are dropped because now i'm in the footway yeah. or i'm in the cycleway whatever and they can set their machine up for guidance along those lines use lane guidance etc to cut out the, the cross falls and, and get really nice tight excavations and, and that's that's where we're seeing our efficiency gain and we're, and we're seeing a increase in quality so um, in your tech focused role that you have what's something you've learned about getting the systems to connect to work together um well we we deployed uh trimble works manager on all of our machines now and that that was a huge game changer to us when we deployed that probably about two and a half years ago now um because previous to that it was running around with usb sticks and and trimble works managers come a long way in the, even the time that we've been using it and there's some exciting things on the road there as well um that that's been big for us just being able to support operators remotely uh, we've been using everything it has to offer really uh, uh internet base stations has become an option for us now thanks to trimble works manager but yeah being able to send firmware to the machines uh, and, and upgrade those remotely and log in, see an operator screen, support them with with issues that they're having. Because there's there's from my perspective, there's nothing more frustrating than when you you're trying to support somebody over the phone, but can't see what they're doing. I'm quite a visual person, yeah. and they're trying to describe a menu to you. You know, back back on GCS days, trying to describe a menu to you, and you just go, just call me on WhatsApp. Oh, you know, give yeah. me a WhatsApp video, or whatever. Um, but now we can see their screen see what they're clicking and and support them in that process and some of them call me occasionally but oh, i want to cut this particular batter in this particular way can you help me set the screen up or whatever um and, and we can dial in and do that and, and having that that flexibility in the platform is really good and being able to update the designs rapidly is has been really big for me particularly um especially on that Welsh job, there's been designers, road highway designers can't leave it alone. They can't leave things alone. <laughs> That's what they're constantly tweaking, constantly yeah. tweaking little things. And part, part of that is a lack of a decent survey to begin with, you know, because they, because some schemes don't spend that money up front and get a good representation of the site before they design the scheme. That means they're constantly having to make changes as they discover new beats, bits of work or levels or whatever. And some of it is probably justifying existence to a degree. But being able to quickly respond to those little changes through the connected workflow is just fantastic. You know, being able to update a model in TBC, immediately publish it to Works Manager and immediately know that all the machines in that area have access to the latest design. The old one's been archived. And you know that you can go to bed at night knowing that they're not digging something incorrectly. You know, yeah. that, that's, that's huge for us. It, it still can't be overstated. Um, you know, removing that USB and removing that drive to site is big. And again, you, you benefit from that lack of people interaction with plant. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, I can only, like, my mind was going back, like, to what it must have been like before it. Like, the, you mentioned that, that, that interaction where they wanted to do it differently. Um, yeah. So they were able to just call you up, you were look on it, you made the changes, and away you went. So imagine prior to that, they went and did it their their way, and then 
the next person that comes in is like, what the heck? This isn't what the model is supposed to be or something like And then that's where all of a sudden things can kind of go off, go off the rails. So it's, yeah. I think, I think from my perspective, it gives me a much more holistic view over the, I'm I'm looking, I'm looking at the works manager account at the minute. I've got got 25 devices in here reporting at the minute. I, I know what design they're running I know where they are. I can log into each one of them if I need to. For, so from a, from a peace of mind, fleet management point of view, it's fantastic. It's just knowing that everything's connected. If I needed to publish a new design, I could do it within the next five minutes from the comfort of my office. You know? All right. That's, so that's the big one. La- last question. So this is our, our, our hot take. Um, mm-hmm. Artificial intelligence is all over the news, and it's the big, big, big conversation piece right now. So... Um, in your opinion, is there a use for uh, AI and machine control in construction? Hundred percent, yeah. And I, I um, I went, to, I attended Trimble Dimensions in November, which was a fantastic experience. I was very grateful for the um, for the opportunity to come and present there as well. Um, but one of one of the interesting things we did that evening was um, just had a had a beer with some of the developers. And and some of the some of the bits that are coming around AI and particularly machine vision with this uh, uh, Nvidia partnership is just fascinating. So, got speaking to some of the developers about potential use cases for that within construction, and it is unlimited if you think about where it could head to. So so the UK is very 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 health and safety focused, quite rightly. Um, and one thing we do continue to struggle with is getting people to report near misses and instances of unsafe work, etc. So, and this particularly manifests for MJ Church in regards to maintaining hall roads, maintaining safe conditions for the ADT trucks to run, etc. And and not all, but some operators may choose to not report something, or they may not identify in it uh, something as unsafe. If you, if we could get to a point where we had cameras mounted on the machines, which were kind of there already, we just need some processing on it. Uh, so some sort of artificial intelligence that's constantly monitoring the site, it could potentially start to identify those unsafe conditions, those instances where the the water has degraded the quality of the hall road. Uh, it could potentially watch the the vehicle interaction of the ADT truck driving in front of it. It could understand that that what that role is starting to move into an unsafe territory, and it could alert the the leadership team before there's an incident. Mm-hmm. So that's potentially one area I can see AI and machine vision being a particular useful um, case. I think the other area, again on the machine vision side, is we, we struggle a lot as an industry with, especially in the UK with uh, material tracking because it seems even in the 18 kilometers worth of road the strata changes every 500 meters maybe so having a good track on where material was excavated from and where it was placed and the suitability is is quite difficult for a human to continually track so an ai system that's understanding a task specific material or has a has an understanding of the task that that operator is performing it could start to feed into platforms like trimble works so as where you go this bucket of material was unsuitable excavated at this time at this moment etc and it removes that whole human element yeah. that rather tedious role of material tracking so yeah there's some huge there's some really exciting potential use cases for ai in construction you said you started off it seems endless uh it does seem endless yeah it seems terrifyingly endless really but you know i'm sure <laughs> there's enough people working on it to... yeah or i mean it also it's an efficiency issue right you know we're we're, we're all coming towards you know uh a, 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 a labor shortage but that's not getting any better a lot of these like material tracking and stuff like that the, these these are all things that could be I don't want to say replaced because it sounds like we're taking away jobs, right? But it's just, it's taking, it's creating things a little bit more efficiently so that we can train uh, humans to do other jobs and get paid to do other jobs. Yeah. More interesting things. 
No, no one wants to do the boring tedium. I, I hate it. I'm a site engineer and I hated the boring tedium. I hate the quality, the quality sheets and all that. It's not, not really my, my thing. But yeah, if we can move towards having some of the monotony taken out of the workplace, yeah, that's a good thing. Awesome. Well, Sam, thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, this was fascinating. I really enjoy, you know, to me, this is a conversation of, of, you know, not to talk, you know, make a civil pun and whatnot, but like where the rubber meets the road, literally, um, you know, that, that technology in the field. So technology in the office is only so interesting. But technology that goes from the office to the field and starts to make a difference, and that's what this was all about today. So thank you so much for 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 your uh, for your input and uh, sharing your experiences with us all today. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for the invite. And everybody for uh, listening or watching. Uh, until next time, stay connected. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Connected Construction Show. For more information, visit us at connectedconstructionshow.com.